Hey there YouTube, it's that one guy in the class, and today we're finally going to finish this series on diagramming. Didn't really expect it to take this long to get these videos made, but here we are. If you haven't watched the previous videos, you should probably go do that now, as this won't make a ton of sense without some prior knowledge. Alright, so this video is going to focus on positives, interjections, and then compound subjects and verbs, and we're going to start with the positives. Now, if you don't remember your high school grammar, an appositive is a word or a phrase that renames the subject of the sentence. We're going to use the example, Bob, the team captain, threw a pass. Now, we have Bob as the subject and threw as the verb, and pass is a direct object telling us what Bob threw, and the word a modifies pass. So, so far this is just like any other sentence that we've diagrammed this whole time that we've been doing this. The only thing that makes it a little tricky is the appositive, the team captain. Now, to diagram that bit, we have to find the noun or pronoun that indicates Bob, our subject. So in this case, it's captain, since captain renames or redefines Bob. We put that word in parentheses next to the subject to indicate it's in a positive. We then diagram any words that modify it, in this case, the words the and team, like normal, but they come down from the appositive rather than the subject. Appositives aren't really tricky as long as you find the word that's renaming or redefining the subject first. All right, moving on to interjections. As you may recall from a Schoolhouse Rock video, which is now going to be stuck in my head for the rest of the day, interjections show excitement or emotion. Interjections are a kind of weird bit of grammar in that they don't really fit in with anything else. They don't really attach to anything else. And this is shown in diagramming, too, because interjections are diagrammed on top of everything else, like not connected at all to the rest of the sentence. So if I had the sentence, ouch, you hit me, we can diagram that, subject, verb, and direct object, like usual, but the ouch actually goes above the subject on its own little line, like this. Again, interjections aren't hard to diagram, you just have to remember they go above the subject on a line of their own. Finally, let's talk about compound subjects and verbs. A compound subject has two or more subjects in a sentence, and a compound verb has two or more verbs. You may also hear compound verbs called compound predicates. The main thing to remember here is that when diagramming them, we put the subjects or verbs one on top of the other and connect them with the conjunction that connects them in the sentence. For example, if I had the sentence, he and I like baseball, I would start by putting the subjects he and I on lines of their own and using slanted lines to connect them to the center of the diagram like this. Next, I use the conjunction and on a line going vertically between them. From there, it's just a matter of adding in the verb and the direct object, and we're done. A compound verb is diagrammed in much the same way. I'll use the sentence, I swim quickly or run slowly. Like every other sentence, we'll start by diagramming the subject and verb, but in this case, there are two verbs, swim and run. Like with the compound subject, we stack them on top of each other like this, and then add in the conjunction or. Finally, our adverbs get added to the verbs they modify, and again, we're done. All right, at this point, if you've watched all these videos, you should be able to diagram most sentences in English. There are a few strange cases here and there, there are a few sort of odd bits of grammar, but this will get you through the vast majority of your standard sentences. And as always, leave comments down below if you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers!